Study and Struggle and Overstanding by Sanyika Shakur. Across the expanse of a couple of decades, we've seen the political consciousness of prisoners grow in proportion with their overstanding of what it actually means to be a prisoner in America, but also as nationals of captive nations held in partial paralysis by U.S. imperialism. Prisoners have slowly begun to take an objective view of the matrix of U.S. colonialism from a dialectical perspective that informs us that the settler government holds, dominates, and exploits both external and internal colonies, and that the old facade of disadvantaged minorities is giving away to the stark reality of submerged nations here under the blurry veneer of a so-called United States. This developing consciousness springs from a revolutionary nationalist understanding of social development. Informed by even the most rudimentary application of dialectical materialism, one is easily drawn to the reality of New Africa, Atlan, Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Alaska, and the indigenous peoples being submerged and colonized, whole nations existing under the false patina of Americanism. The greater our understanding of this reality, the less we are believing in or relying on the old, obviously false social construct of race to define ourselves and other oppressed people. Color or race as a binary term to describe the shallow differences between humans, having no scientific basis in reality, is not deep enough, not sound or reasonable enough, overstanding to explain, confront, and resolve our problems. It's been said that the color of freedom in America is green. This tells us something about the false construct of race, no? It hints at the fact that under the rubble of race is bedrock. And that bedrock, that solid foundation is economics, is capitalism. We can't even discuss, or we shouldn't even discuss, racism without mentioning and combining it with capitalism. For capitalism built a social construct of race around itself as a motto, a defense and justification of pro for prolonged activity. Capitalism, the material manifestation, race is the shadow or immaterial reality of what casts it as a consequence of the original form. It's not that it's wholly unreal, we can see it, the shadow I mean. We can even feel it, but it is but a reflection. We'll exhaust ourselves to the point of madness trying to combat it alone without applying the destructive force to the material thing that it reflects. To be anti-racist is to be anti-capitalist. We become anti-racist by not using binary terms constructed to promote and sustain race. Any attempt to destroy racism without an explicit link to the struggle against capitalism ultimately serves only to reinforce racist ideology and to shield capitalism from attack. On the other hand, an attempt to combat capitalism without an explicit link to anti-racist discourse and struggle allows capitalism to use the belief in race held by oppressed peoples and appeal to the racism of citizens of the oppressive state thus undermining all revolutionary initiative. This combat also requires that we begin to delink ourselves from the use of language that reinforces and reproduces racial ideology, e.g. the terms white and black in reference to the identity of peoples. In our developing consciousness, which is necessarily new African, revolutionary, and nationalist, we are needing new tools, new language, new ideas, means, and ways to rebuild ourselves into a coherent whole for movement and struggle. We are talking about cadre development. This will come about only through arduous study and struggle. See, here's the basic thing. If you are calling yourself a new African, then you're at once saying that you are not an American of any stripe. You are rejecting the reactionary colonial identity placed arbitrarily on you by the enemy culture. You are implying that you are a citizen of the Republic of New Africa. Further, this means that you overstand that a new African nation exists and has existed in North America at least since 1660. Now, nation here is not to be confused with a state or government. 
a nation is a cultural slash custom slash linguistic social development that is consolidated and evolves on a particular landmass and shares a d definite collective awareness of itself. New Africa, as a distinct entity, a totally working class nation, has existed since 1660 here. The nation was given shape, names, general laws, and a creed in 1968 with the founding of the provisional government by over 500 new African nationalists. Established at this historic convention was the New African Declaration of Independence, Code of Emoja, which is the New African Constitution, and the New African Creed. A president, vice presidents, people's center councils, and a people's revolutionary leadership council were elected to designate new African population districts set up registration for a new African census, etc. This was the forming of a state, an organized body designed to coherently give shape and form to the already long existing new African nation. So we are not trying to create a nation. The nation exists. We are trying to agitate, educate, and organize this nation for land, independence, and socialism. This can only be realized through revolution. And despite what we've recently seen in North Africa with their Arab Spring, we are under no illusions about our struggle here being a protracted, long, drawn out revolutionary war, and truthfully necessarily so. We have a lot of cleansing to do after existing so close to the seat of world power for so long. We overstand our level of contamination. We are talking about being ideologically consistent, about pushing a particular line. Again, I want to go to Comrade Yaki because his instructions are profound. Angolan, Russian, Algerian, Chinese, French, Vietnamese, Cuban, Korean, Tanzanian, these are nationalities. Our nationality is New African. We don't refer to ourselves as black because we don't base our nationality nor our politics on race or color or a biological element of our being. Social factors are the primary determinations of our national identity and our politics. The same reason we don't call ourselves black is also why we don't call ourselves African-American or Negro, colored, etc. These are chains which tie us to the plantation, to the colonial system. These are terms that substantiate, promote, and sustain the colonial mentality and thus our oppression. Again, Comrade Yaki's words instruct. The native the Negro, the colored, the black, and the African American have no identity apart from that given to them by the colonizer. That is, not unless they resist colonialism, which entails, one, their maintenance of an identity that is separate and distinct from that of the colonizer, two, they begin to develop a new identity through the process of decolonization. Though having remained separate and distinct, Colonized people aren't who they were prior to colonization, and they can't return to the past. Colonization has arrested their independent development, distorted who they are, and now they must become a new people during the process by which they regain their independence. Let's go a bit into this. Those who are calling themselves African Americans are really doing so for two reasons. First, of course, there is an implicit understanding that runs thoroughly through the new African nation that we are not really Americans, that we are in fact a people slash nation unto ourselves. This used to be widely overstood with little notion of anything to the contrary. Neocolonialism has worked obsessively to change this awareness. The rapid decolonization or desegregation of the nation beginning in the late 1950s ushered in a new, more thorough, and dare I say revolutionary form of control and exploitation, neocolonialism. Blacks took over from Negroes to lead the masses into an integrated lockstep with capitalism, while the, they, the misleaders, were awarded nominal posts in local and regional government. Because the bourgeois media postulated that these class enemies as being successful in a new and improved America, it fostered an image crafted by Madison Avenue that anybody could make it. Now that segregation is over, you can grow up to be anything you want, except free, of course. The more integration, which was supposed to mean freedom and equality, we got, the worse our predicament became. 
The more bourgeois freedom and equality we struggled to obtain, the more critical our existence became, the stronger the black bourgeoisie got, compounded a hundred times by the U.S. ruling class. The stronger the black bourgeoisie became, the more our revolutionary leadership was attacked, assassinated, imprisoned, or exiled. The more this became so, the worse the hoods got. The worse the hoods got, the more street orgs began to proliferate. More dope, more guns, more pigs, more prisons. This is what the losing of a sense of self brings. Integration is neocolonialism, and it's reactionary nationalism. But it would be unfair to say it's not progress. It is progress. It's just not progress in our interest. We are moving forward, but it is towards our annihilation. The black bourgeoisie worked in tandem with its masters to keep the chains on New Africa. They overstood the strong national sentiment that ran through the nation. So in order to placate the sentiment and please their masters, the black bourgeoisie introduced the term African-American, a split personality that straddled an ocean and a colonial existence. But because our leaders said it was right, and after all, the masses said, we are Africans, voila. This, of course, is not scientific or a reflection of any true reality. It is a term used to maintain a colonial relationship with New Africa, now being run by remote control through the antics and colorful animation of the African-American bourgeoisie. You see them in Congressional Black Caucus, the higher echelons of Prince Hall Masons in the Persons of Oprah, Jesse, Al Sharpton, Robert Johnson, etc. They've been appointed by the U.S. ruling class to lead the masses into a neo-colonial marriage with America. The African-American bourgeoisie is conjoined face to ass with the U.S. ruling class and no surgery short of protracted people's war will loosen them and free us. The masses by and large are innocently confused. They can be redeemed. It is our job as cadres to do that. Which is why it is so important to study and struggle, to build up your revolutionary ideological, philosophical, and theoretical understanding so as to be able to distinguish the real from the false, the righteous from the reactionary. Our vision must be emphasized in opposition to the imperialist and neocolonialist perspectives. Our vision demands that we stress the need to establish new African state power as the prerequisite for the long-term resolution of colonial violence, bad housing, miseducation, poor health, no jobs, etc. At present, the orientation underlying mass struggle is primarily neocolonialist. We ask the U.S. government to do things for us. Our struggle is against the U.S. government to secure the power to prevent it from doing things to us and so that we can do things for ourselves under our own government. Each issue that the masses struggle around must be infused by the people's vanguard with the idea that none of our problems can be solved until we achieve national independence. In closing then, I'd like to simply emphasize the need to study and struggle. Study revolutionary nationalism and struggle around the issues that are affecting us. It's a beautiful thing to see more prisoners becoming conscious of themselves as new Africans. This too is a prerequisite for, to getting free. Change your mind and you can change your conditions. Overstanding and appreciating the reality of one's situation gives one a greater sense of appreciation for other oppressed nationals in the same or similar predicaments. I'm gonna fall out with a quote by Comrade Yaki that pretty much sums it all up. Anyone claiming to attack racism while claiming that racism is the only thing wrong with the system is either terribly confused or an outright enemy of the people and their interests. If we truly wanna get rid of racism, we have to overthrow capitalism first. Last words on my lips, I am a revolutionary. And you're gonna to have to keep on saying that. You're gonna to have to say that I am a proletarian. I am the people, I'm not the big.